Hi everyone, I come to you with exceedingly great joy in my heart. And I felt impressed to share with you a teaching. This is a teaching I did back in August of 2016. And so much has changed um, since August in, in the world, in our lives. But I felt really impressed by the Spirit to share this teaching. I felt it was just a, a appropriate for where we are right now as the church. So the, the title of this teaching is The Road Less Traveled. And I'm going to start in uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, starting with verse 24. These are Jesus' words. This is, this is what I can consider a hard saying. So if you remember the movie Mary Poppins, she said, just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. And God's word is medicine. And this is a hard saying. So um, if you have some sugar handy, you might want to take a spoonful of it before you listen to this message. Okay, so this, this is Jesus speaking. He says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us, and he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Now that's a hard saying. This message about the road less traveled. Now, I know that Jesus is speaking here specifically to people um, who don't know God. And we know that many people try to come to God on their own terms. They come on their own merit or their own piety, rather than coming to know God as to know God through Jesus. But here's the thing. Once a person's life has ended, ended, once you take your last breath, the door of opportunity to respond to Jesus is closed and access into God's presence cannot be gained. It's over. When you take your last breath, it's over. When Jesus says, I do not know you, there were, there were people at the time. They were in his presence. They sat in the synagogue and they listened to his teachings. And they were there when he performed miracles and they actually ate and drank with him. But they did not know him as Savior. They were close. Very close. Prime example is Judas, but he never knew Jesus as God in the flesh. Jesus makes it, cl makes it clear from Luke's account that it wasn't and still isn't and never will be enough to just be around him and observe him. No, we must embrace him as our one and only Savior, the true and living God. Now I want to look at Matthew's um, version. This is from Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 13 and 14. And Jesus says this. He says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. 
So this road less traveled is the narrow way. It's narrow and it's difficult. And so this teaching is not targeted to non-believers. It's targeted to those who say, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer in Christ. That's who I'm speaking to with this message. And let me say from the outset, I'm in no way judging you, but I am challenging you to walk the narrow way. You see, even, even as a believer, there is a narrower way. It's called the road less traveled. And I believe there are um, three things that the narrow way entails. One is a life surrendered, surrendered to Jesus Christ. Two is a life of obedience. And three is a life of holiness. And, um, you know, I gave a prophetic word recently about holiness. Because we have to come to grips with something here. We have to come to grips with the fact that this is a serious time we live in. But more than that, God's trying to get his bride prepared. He's trying to adorn her with holiness and righteousness and pure, unadulterated love, agape love. He's trying to get her ready. So I just want to share some scriptures and talk to you for a few minutes about the surrendered life. Because this narrowed way, this narrow way, is the road less traveled by many Christians and many before us. Listen to what our dear sweet brother Job wrote in chapter 23, verses 11 and 12. Job said, My foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his way and not turned aside. I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary words. I'm sorry, more than my necessary food. I want to... I'll, Repeat that. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Jesus says in Mark 8, verses 34 and 35, he says, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Listen to what Paul writes in Philippians chapter 3. Several scriptures here. Let's start with verse 7. Paul says, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness, which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and being conformed to his death. And Paul goes on, he says, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, he says, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. He says, brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and apprehending those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. If there was ever a surrendered life, Paul's a lovely example of it. He was the Pharisee of Pharisees. He was, you know, he was the greatest, most brilliant mind. And yet he says, I count it all loss. It's rubbish. I just want to know Jesus. That is what I'm pressing to lay hold of, Paul says. And he says, I'm forgetting all that 
stuff in the past. I'm apprehending what's in the future for me. So he was a wonderful example of a surrendered life to Christ. This scripture in 1 Corinthians 15, 34, 33 and 34 says, Don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to church people. I'm not speaking to the drunkard out there, the drug addict. I'm speaking to church people. I'm talking about the road less traveled. This is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. And... Um, you know, when you read some of Jesus' sayings, they are hard sayings. They're hard to swallow. Jesus says in chapter 5 of Matthew 41, And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Have you ever thought about that? That's the road less traveled. Jesus says, um, You've heard it said that you shall love your enemy uh, I'm sorry, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those that hate you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. It's a road less traveled. It's a life surrendered. So let me just conclude with this. This is Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Paul says this. He says, put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. A life surrendered is a life that surrenders the flesh to the spirit. Makes no provision for the lust of the flesh. And the flesh is strong. No doubt about it. The flesh is strong. But that flesh has to be surrendered. It has to be put down. And we have to take the road less traveled. We have the master potter, Jesus Christ, the potter. He's got us on the potter's wheel. He's fashioning us. He's forming us. And he's trying to conform us to his image. And if you let him, and you don't, don't jump off the potter's wheel, wheel, he will conform you to his image. So, I hope that blessed you. I do hope that you will consider taking the road less traveled and living a life surrendered to our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen.